What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about why you need to live below your means even if you have money. And by that I simply mean if you're making good money, if you have a good amount of money in your bank account, if you've reached a lot of your financial goals and you're doing well, that's what I mean by having money. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're rich or that you're even wealthy. It just means that you're making a good amount of money. Let's say you're making 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 plus per year. When you make a certain amount of money, it gets to a point where it's like, ah, oh, I can take you know a step back. I can ease up on a lot of things, and you can. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't still live below your means. A couple of weeks ago, I made a video about how to live below your means to save money. And you may not need to live below your means to the extent of someone who's just getting started out or the extent of someone who isn't making that much money and really has to be intentional about every dollar they spend. But I think you'd be working against yourself to be making a good amount of money, but then not spending it wisely and not using the money wisely. Every dollar you make right now, you work for and you work hard for it, whether you're working per hour, whether you're working a salary job that you're guaranteed to get a certain amount of money, no matter how many hours you work, whether you have your own business, wherever you are in life, you have to think about how you got there. You may have went to school. You may have gotten the specific skill or trade. You may just have gotten really good at a specific thing, but either way, it took time hard work, dedication, and even working smart to make the amount of money that you're making right now. And because we've done so much to achieve where we're at right now, because we've done so much to get the amount of money we make right now, because we've had to get a certain amount of accolades in our lives and achievements in our lives to get to where we're at, it feels like nobody can tell us anything to do about our money. It feels like I've done this, I have this title, I put in this amount of years of work, I built this skill set over the past decade, you can't tell me nothing. And I think everybody at every level feels that way. It doesn't matter how little or how much money you're making. A lot of people feel like this is my hard earned money. I'll spend it how I please. And if you have money, if you're making good money and you have a good amount in your bank account, didn't mean to rhyme, but that was dope. That's good. I'm not saying you shouldn't enjoy life. I'm not saying you shouldn't go out to eat or buy something nice for yourself. What I'm saying is we need to be intentional with our money. And if you make a good amount of money, you're making 70, 80 grand a year, and you have a lot of money in your savings, feel like you've done a lot of the right thing, you have. So you're obviously gonna have way more spending money than someone who's just getting started out or even struggling or living paycheck to paycheck, and that is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with having a little extra money to spend and buy yourself, and as everyone says, treat yourself to something nice. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you make a good amount of money, it's easy to be tempted to be like, okay, well, I can afford to live here now. I can afford to get this car now. Now we're talking about stuff that perpetually keeps you in the same state that you would have been if you were making significantly less money. Because now, even though you're making good money, you've raised your expenses to a level that almost matches or maybe even exceeds the amount of money that you make right now. So I'm never going to be a person who tells anyone how to spend their money, but I'm always going to have a suggestion based on where you're at in life right now. And even to this day, this is something that I went through just a couple years ago. I was moving up, I was getting my raises, I was making some good money, still am, you know what I'm talking about, but this was when I'm getting the taste of it. I'm still young, I'm 27. And when I got into the mid 80s, the early 90s, I'm like, okay, I can, I can do a little bit now. And I've never been one to just like up and move out of my place or anything and get a really expensive rent or whatever, or get a brand new car or anything like that. For me, it was just like, oh, I can just spend money all the time without even looking at my bank account. That's what I got into the habit of doing. I got into the habit of, oh, well, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Let me go ahead and go out to eat all the time, almost every single day. We're talking like four, sometimes five days a week. Cooking at home was minimal. And do I have to do that? No. Could I eat out as much as I want to? Yeah. But after a while, it just doesn't really seem that smart to do, especially when you understand that there's other things you can do with your money. You can continue to build your savings account. You can continue to invest into your 401k, your Roth IRA, or your own individual investing account and have your money working for you. Because the whole point of working, don't, don't make any mistake with this. The whole point of working is so that you can one day retire. And we have to consider that by the time we hit retirement age, retirement is gonna be way more expensive than it is right now. Nowadays, you're, you're gonna need at least 3 million by the time you retire to be able to live comfortably. And that sounds like a lot, but you know what else sounds like a lot? 
the amount of money that we spend frivolously on a daily basis without thinking twice about it whether we make good money or not. And I have been one of those people, but I had to reflect and really think about it. And especially over like quarantine and like 2020 and like during COVID when it first started over here, I actually got quarantined and I really thought about this stuff. That was why I made my whole like rant and my whole series about frugal living, which really got my channel popular about those types of topics. I'm not here to always talk about saving money. I'm not always here to talk about keeping some extra dollars in your pocket or anything like that. And I'm definitely not telling you to penny pinch. I'm saying we need to be very intentional. I mean, extremely intentional with what we do with our dollars because we want to retire one day. We want to give our families the things that they deserve, that we deserve. But when you go out and when you do like what I did, yeah, I'm going to just do it. I, I deserve this. I've been working hard this week. I've been working hard this year. I've been working hard for the past five, six, seven, eight years. It's easy to tell yourself these narratives that say, you know what, man, you've been doing good. You've been putting in that work. You've been sweating. You've been putting in them hours. You've been going to bed exhausted every night. Get yourself a little something, something. The problem is we feel like we're too deserving. That's what I found. Sometimes we can feel like we're so deserving of everything that is finer in life. And we feel like we're so deserving of a good time and a good life. And our definition of good life is stuff that we saw on Instagram and people doing all these things. And we don't know anything about them. We don't know what their bank accounts are like. We don't know anything. We just assume that because they're on the beach or because they're in a place that you've always wanted to go to, that they got it made and they're making good, good, good money. They're not living below their means. Why should I? It's easy to fall into that trap of comparison. And the whole point of this video, you can live below your means and still be very, very happy. Or you can do what I say, maxing out your salary. You know, you make 100 grand a year, you spend 100 grand a year. You can max out your salary every single year and still be unhappy because now you still want more. We perpetuate this feeling of more, more, more. We perpetuate this feeling of I deserve, but you have to understand sometimes you have to work for what you deserve because do you, do you deserve it because you're a good person? Why do you deserve it? Ask yourself these questions. Like, I don't know you, you know what I'm talking about, but I had to ask myself these questions. Why do I deserve it? Is it because I'm a good person? Because I have good morals? Because I'm a good guy? because I'm honest, because I'm respectful. Nah, that stuff makes me a good person. But how do I deserve all the things that are nice? What work am I, Reggie Bryant, putting in to deserve that? We all feel like we deserve a raise at work. We all feel like we deserve a promotion at work because we come to work, we're on time, we're there for the full time, we don't leave, we don't call off for work. Let me tell you something, that's the bare minimum. You know what you deserve for that? You deserve a paycheck. I'm, I'm here to tell you that you deserve a paycheck for that. Who is going above and beyond? Who is coming up with solutions to problems instead of complaining about them? That's when you deserve more money. So when we talk about life, you know, we're talking about the good money that you're making already. You're already driven. You've already done a lot of great things in life. But when we talk about walking out of the door and going into the world where we see a bunch of things on TV, there's so many things advertised foods, electronics, luxury items, clothes. I just think sometimes the worst thing we can tell ourselves is, I deserve this. What you deserve are the basics first. You deserve to have a roof over your head. You deserve to have clothes on you. You deserve to have shoes. You deserve to have a retirement account. You deserve to have a bank account, a savings account, an emergency fund. You deserve to have these things, but you have to work for every single thing I just said. Every single thing. And something I encourage you to really think about is how much does a dollar cost to you? And by that, I mean, how much work do you have to put in to get a certain dollar amount? And then how quick and easy is it to make a decision to just spend it? Money doesn't just regenerate itself unless, of course, you have your money working for you. But how many of us even do that? It's easy to buy the new iPhone, right? The new iPhone 14 Pro Max. But it's not easy to go into the stock market and buy an Apple stock. It's actually really easy to do that. But mentally, it's hard because what if it goes down? What if I lose my money? This right here is guaranteed to lose money. You're guaranteed to trade this thing right here in in just a few years. And it's an advanced, very solid piece of technology. Very advanced. I remember when I was five years old getting on computers. Hey, this, this thing puts those old computers to shame. 
dial up, all that stuff. A company that's capable of achieving what Apple has achieved is a company, in my opinion, worth investing in. And I'm heavily invested in the Apple. But that goes against the norm. We might all want the nice things in life. We might feel like we deserve the nice things in life, right? But when it comes to like iPhones, when it comes to iPads, when it comes to AirPods, when it comes to anything you can think of that's luxurious, anything that looks cool, anything that is like a staple in marketing right now, anything that makes you look like you have money, it's okay to want those things. It's okay to feel like you deserve those things. But when we raise our expenses to max out what we make, now we're forcing ourselves to live paycheck to paycheck. We're forcing ourselves to work harder, to work more overtime, to really, really go for that promotion, to really, really get uncomfortable when things get tight at work because now if this is all I got, now I'm in a corner. If this is all I got and I lose it, now what do I do? What you do is you make smart financial decisions up front. We're deserving of a lot of things, but we don't always get what we deserve, and we see that all the time. Someone who gets a promotion at work doesn't always deserve it. That is a fact. People date people they don't deserve all the freaking time. People get nicer things than they deserve, and people get lesser than desirable things than they deserve all the time. So you have to take away the human aspect, as bad as it may sound. You have to take away that aspect of, well, I'm a good person. I do so much for everybody and I work so hard. I know. I know what's up with it. I get it. You have to grow beyond that feeling, though. You can't allow the I deserve mentality to take rule over your financial decisions. Because even though you're making good money, you can go right back into a bad situation. We're not in a favorable time right now as far as the economy stands. And even in a booming economy, there's a lot of financially unstable people who don't know what they're doing with their personal finance. And we tell ourselves it's normal to live paycheck to paycheck. We tell ourselves it's normal to just, you know, yeah, you, you grow up, you become an adult, you step into the real world. It's hard now. It's hard. Step into the real world. Now you're paying bills for the rest of your life. We weren't born for that. We weren't born to struggle either. A lot of times our own decisions put us in that situation. And you look at celebrities, people who are millionaires, people can lose it all based off of bad financial decisions. Not understanding how taxes work, not understanding that you don't truly make that 77 grand you think you make. You really make something like 56, 57 that you actually take home. When you get a bonus at work that's supposed to be $5,000, nah, 40% of that is cut. Even the money you have right now sitting in your bank account is going to be gone at some point in time. It's either going to be spent on something else or it's going to go to someone else. It's, it's not always going to be yours. We have to be intentional with our money now because because as great as the nice things in life are, we have, there's so much to life. And everyone says life is short. Like, look, you don't know how short your life is going to be. You don't know how long your life is going to be. There's no way we can know that. All we can know is, am I making the right decision? And you may not know that the moment you make it, right? But you can think about it. And I can think back to when I was 21, I was making financial decisions that I thought were best for me back then. And I was investing $600 in an MLM every single month. And I thought that was going to get me to where I needed to go. But what, what it left me was $600 in the drain every single month that you could say could have just went into my savings account because I was making some good money at 21. 60K a year, and I was working overtime. In a low-cost living area, I was making good money at 21. And at first, I wasn't living below my means. I made a few tweaks and adjustments. Then I was. Then I was able to bank way more money than I was ever able to. And then I was like, ooh, MLM. If y'all don't know what that is, it's the multi-level marketing. And they drained all kinds of money out of my pockets for about a year straight. But I didn't know what I was doing then. So in retrospect, if I would have put... $300 in savings and $300 into investments, that would have multiplied by now, but I didn't know that. I wasn't as intentional with spending my money as I should have been. Because if you didn't know, investing is also a part of living below your means. Don't invest so much that it's going to hurt you in the future, even if you can afford to lose that money. Financially speaking, it doesn't do you as much good as it would have done. Like if that money was in my savings account, I would have multiplied 600 by 12 every single month. And that was what I was getting off of overtime. So that wasn't even my guaranteed money. That was just what I was spending with my overtime money. 
You have to do everything wisely from investing to saving to spending. Everything has to be planned. Everything has to have a strategy. And if it fails, you have to make an adjustment. There's no reason in keeping the same habits, buying the same things and, you know, eventually feeling like money's tight. While you're ahead, you can think about how much money you want to spend on yourself every month and then leave it at that and become disciplined with that piece of it. Because we can automate our savings account like I tell you guys to do all the time. We can master our budget like I tell you to do all the time. We can invest our money into good companies like I tell y'all to do every single video. But when you have a bank account full of money and you're making good money, you can be like, oh, you know what? I know you done did this before. I did it before too. Oh, yeah. Man, my, my bank account is looking good. Let me go ahead and go to my favorite restaurant, man. It's okay to do that a few times, but when you do it to a point where you dwindle your account and now you have to rebuild it back up, that's how you know you're taking a step backwards. Let me buy this $1,000, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, air fryer off of Amazon. Did you really need that? Some people take it to the extreme. Let me get a Mercedes AMG. I'm making 70 grand a year, but I'm going I'm to pay 80 to 100 for this Mercedes. That's the extreme. And people do that all the time. Why? Because I'm making good money. Live below your means, guys. Please, live below your means. It is going to catapult you to a place where you've always wanted to be in the future. I'm not saying that saving money is going to get you rich. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying being smart with your money is. Because as you get more money in your life, as you will, because you're already making good money, you're going to bring more money in. I already know. That's what driven people do. But as you get that more money, you'll be able to actually handle it. And you won't be one of those people who, okay, I, I got to 150 grand and I'm spending 150 grand a year. Like, no, 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 no. Now you're going the wrong way. You stay the course. If you can get to a point where you're only spending half of what you make a year and you're able to do other things with the other half, i.e. paying off debt, saving money, investing, looking into side ventures, looking into side projects and things of that nature, giving some money to a family member, helping some people out, giving to charity, whatever it is that your jam is, whatever you want to do. But this is going to give you more, more versatility in the future with your money. And you'll be able to handle it a lot more. You'll be able to invest it a lot better, save it a lot more, and you will not be stressed out. When they say money doesn't buy happiness, I never really believed it. And to this day, I still have trouble with that quote because I think money does afford you the opportunities and the experiences in life that a lot of people really want to have. And it gives you a nice step away from the chaos that is the real world and that is the, the work and the grind and everything, right? But I also think that spending money too much can buy you into a constant state of unhappiness. And that's not what we need because then it's comparison is always chasing. It's always, well, I want more. I got a Mercedes AMG. Now I want, you know what I'm saying? Now I want a G Wagon. Now I want a BMW i8. Always want more. And then you spend so much money that now your salary is maxed out. And now you really are living check to check. And that's going to make you feel stressed out especially if you don't have a cushion in your bank account. And even if you do have a cushion, if you max out your salary, you might see some more unforeseen expenses. Now your expenses are exceeding your salary. And then you have to reach into your cushion of money just to stay afloat. I know what I'm talking, look man, I know what I'm talking about. It happens, but it doesn't have to happen. Anyway, I can go all day on this. That is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching this video. Check me out on Patreon. I will see you in the next one.